There we go. All right. So welcome, everyone, and to those of you watching on Facebook, um, it's good to be here again and with you all. So will you pray with me, please? Seeker of the lost, find us. With your love and grace, enfold us and lift us up with your hope. Amen. Amen. So I love these two parables, um, and also the one that follows on, which I did not include in today's reading. Uh, it's often called the prodigal son. Um, and you know that story, I think most of you, the son gets an inheritance and from one son, and he goes off to a distant country, and he spends all of his money, and he ends up having to work in the, in the pigsty, and he doesn't have anything to eat, and so he finally decides he's going to go home and beg his father for a job as you know one of his servants, just working for his dad. And he does, and his father sees him coming from a long way away, and rejoices when he comes, and celebrates, and, and they have a big feast. And meanwhile, the other son comes in from the field, and he says, hey, wait a minute. I've never been able to have a party, and yet, you know, this other son of yours, as he puts it, he doesn't call him his brother, this, this son of yours, um, was away wasting all of his money, and he comes home now, and now you're going to throw a party. And the father says, the parent says, we lost him, and we have him back now, so of course we're going to celebrate. So those are, they all have some of the same theme, finding what was thought to be lost, and celebrating the finding of that lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost child. And I find these parables very comforting, uh, that no matter what happens to us, and no matter what we do, divine love searches for us and rejoices when we are found. Each of us is unique and special to God who celebrates the wholeness and the safety of every human being. Just as a shepherd cherishes the sheep, or a person keeps track of their finances, or a parent watches out for their children. It doesn't mean that the misplaced sheep or coin or child is more important or more special than to the shepherd or accountant or parent, but concern for their well-being pulls them to search until the lost are found. So Jesus is saying that that's how God is. Every member of a group or crowd or tribe or nation or race is as important as every other. God does not, in spite of our fears, play favorites. Every one of us is precious to God. Please know what we have done or not done is not part of God's equation figuring our work. The shepherd didn't write off the sheep that wandered away as foolish or worthless, nor did the woman with the coins decide that the lost one must have been counterfeit or not worth as much as the other coins. I mean, we don't know the worth of those coins. They could, the rest of them could have been quarters, and the lost one might have been a dime, right? But she looked for all of them. This is tough for us human beings sometimes. I know it is for me. Um, but it's true that in God's sight, our wrongs, our sins, our crimes, our errors, whatever you want, term you want to use, cannot make us unworthy. No matter how much or how little we have done, God loves us just the same. And who are we to say? Who are we to say that we are not worthy of God's love. As error prone as we are, being human, we are still beloved by God and equally. The embezzler, the one who cheats on his diet, the one who uses every tax loophole and then stretches some others, the parent who abandons her child, the dictator, the speeder on the Dan Ryan, Every one of them and every one of us are precious to God. Just like a shepherd still cares for the sheep that wanders off and a person looking for that one coin and a parent mourning the absence of a child and wondering about their well-being, God pulled 
holds every person in the arms of love and grace. Now, Paul says in Romans, Romans 8, as a matter of fact, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now, I'm not always a big fan of Paul, not always, um, but here and in Galatians, he spots <coughs> out. So in Galatians, he says that in God there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, man or woman. We are all equal in the sight of God. No <laughs> distinctions. As the saying goes, there are no second-class citizens in the city of God. I'll admit, it's harder sometimes to, to, uh, to live by that understanding. I mean, we, like, I get it up here, but sometimes here in my heart, it's hard. It's often easier to judge others than to judge ourselves. How in the world could she make such a poor decision? Why didn't he seek help earlier? Well, that's what happens. You've had enough education. Well, look where he comes from. What did you expect? All those judgmental statements we find echoing in our heads. And it's easy to compare ourselves favorably to others. <clears throat> well, at least I'm not like that person, whoever that person is. I may drive too fast sometimes, but I've never been abusive to anyone. That sort of thing, right? But it's not about who's better or worse. And that's what the scripture this morning is about. It's not about levels of mistakes made or the magnitude of our errors. It's about understanding that God has a level playing field. No one gets more love or less love because of who they are or what they have done. I know it's hard to live into. I believe it with all my heart, and yet when I'm faced with actual people doing terrible things, it can be very difficult to remember that God loves that person just as much as God loves me. God's concern is that we be all of us who we were created to be, be all of who we were created to be. Sheep belong with the flock, a lost coin cannot be spent on food to feed a family, and siblings belong together in love. That's why God's love looks <clears throat> for us, wants us to be a part of the flock, the pile of coins, the family. These things do not always happen, of course. Families are strange, sheep are thrown out of the flock, I think probably many of us have seen those cartoons on uh, Facebook and on Twitter with the flock of sheep and, and Jesus carrying one that either has, sometimes it's a rainbow, you know, uh, back to the flock. The one I really love is the one with the, the sheep that has the transgender colors. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, the flock, one of the flock says, um, oh yeah, he ran away. And Jesus says, yes, and I brought her back. So, you know, that's that sort of image. Mm -hmm. I would guess that for every one of us here, there has been pain around rejection, loss, estrangement, mistakes made, regrets. We've done things we wish we hadn't done and not done things we wish we had done. We've been on both sides of that, of that pain. We're human. We will do such things and have them done to us. But this is the good news, my friends. God still sees us as worthy and beloved. God will look for us. God will welcome us with joy and celebration. In the words of a friend, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Period. In all God's names. Amen. 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 Amen.